Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum, a special day here where we have Herb Baker with us here. Herb, right. welcome. Yeah, thank Herb you. Herb was a procurement officer at Johnson Space Center, but his mother sewed the parasol. Parasol on what? For Skylab. For Skylab. So yeah. he's here today because we've got our documentary going. Rusty Schweiker just walked in the building. We're going to talk to Herb here a little bit about his his mother. One of the uh, this is the event we have going on here. Thank you. You're part of this documentary, right? That's right. Yeah. With the uh, uh, and. Um, We've got Alexandra and Dwight interviewed them yesterday, the producer and director of this wonderful do Skylab documentary. And as I'm looking around, seeing, uh, looking for Jack Lawson to come in, there's Rusty Swikert. But we want to talk to you about not these great guys, but this great woman, one of the unsung, really hidden figures. Wouldn't you say your mother uh, is? Yeah, yeah, no, that. I think Tell us about uh, your mom and what's her name? Uh, Eileen Baker. Eileen um, Baker. What was uh, her maiden name? Where was she from? Uh, Rackley from uh, Dallas area. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. The Rackleys from Dallas. Huh? Yes. In there, yes. and then the Bakers are from. Uh. uh Trinity, Texas, uh, kind of central. Okay, well, so you are Texans. Eastern. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, everybody knows Skylab was in peril. They, it took them uh, how long to figure out how to do this? And there's your mom. We've shown that yeah. picture many times on yeah. our oh, yeah. Stay Curious podcast, Herb. Well, actually, that's you mentioned how long it took. That's one of the interesting things to me about this. So from the time the, the, uh, the first launch uh, uh, with the, without the crew and they had the problem in the micrometeorite heat shield was ripped off and the solar arrays were stuck, um, it, the time it took to to determine a, a, a fix for it, uh, uh, design it, uh, manufacture it, uh, test it, fly it to KSC, put it on the uh, the, the module to f fly up with the first crew was ten days. Hmm. Wow! And that just that blows my mind to think that th that all happened within ten days. So well, how old were you at the time? Do you remember this? Were I, yeah. You... Oh, oh, yeah. In fact, I I. Uh, was working for ABC News uh, covering. Now I, I was not part of the you know broadcast team or anything, but they had hired me as a, a runner. They called it so back then. Right. Whenever they uh, uh, filmed a, a video, or <laughs> there was no film. Video. Yeah. <laughs> whenever they filmed film, a, filmed film. a film, uh, a, an interview with an astronaut or a flight director or something like that, the film had to be physically moved from uh, Houston to New York, where the studios were, so that they could broadcast it on TV. And so they. They uh, hired me to twice a day drive that film to the other side of Houston, oh, Intercontinental wow. Airport, to drop it off on a plane to be flown to to New York. And so, so that was, I was about a thirty dollar a day job, <laughs> something like that. Well, you know, interesting about that. So I was my regular job. I was let's see, I was at that time I was twenty years old, and I was off from college. The uh -huh. timing worked well enough that I could uh, come home and and do that. Uh, I was. Uh, my summer jobs were typically at a service station for 71 cents an hour and ABC paid me 250 an hour Whoa. and so yeah I was in heaven there you go <laughs> yeah uh, so uh what does your mom talk about this uh she's passed on has she and yes uh, yes she uh, has uh, what uh, kind of notoriety I'm sure she got a nice plaque and stuff like that but uh, what yeah, did she, she talk did. about this well she you know it's, it's that's funny because I was just talking with someone about this the other day she ne she never really talked about it much I mean she did in fact one of the things that that I got after she passed on was uh, uh, s signed uh, thank you notes from all three crews. Really? So, oh, so wow. all nine of the, ast the Skylab yeah. astronauts uh, signed, you know, basically uh -huh. a, a little uh, uh, appreciation note. Uh, of course, that's for the, the fix up did. there, and yes, then uh, uh, then uh, and, and that thing is it, it may not look it. It's, it's that's huge. It's twenty two feet by twenty four feet. Wow. So, you know, the, the, the photo I think you'll show later of her uh, actually sewing the thing. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. Took, uh, you could see three people to help guide that thing through the, the sewing machine. It was it was so large. And her first name again? Eileen. Eileen. A-E? A-L-Y-E-N-E. Okay, Eileen. That's kind of a Texas name there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's uh, the legacy? And you have uh, kids, grandkids that... Uh, no, uh, Eileen Baker helped save the Skylab. Yeah, uh, two sons that are they're both grown now, and uh, yeah, you know she did get to spend some time with them when they were uh -huh. they were younger. But uh, uh, yeah, I actually 
she had a you know very interesting life not just Skylab uh, uh, go forward to 69 70 71 she uh, believe it or not she was the personal assistant for uh, Jules Bergman the ABC science editor yeah back then that's how I got the job with ABC wow, okay. as, as the runner is no uh, nepotism there well yeah that's good yeah <laughs> worked, worked for always me. A, yeah that's but, great. Uh, and, and I still and didn't have never thought to ask her how she got involved with with Jules Bergman but uh yeah so so she she worked uh and I worked with her Apollo 11 Apollo 12 Apollo 13 Apollo 15 and and the first two Skylab missions uh, uh -huh. for for ABC and, and then after after she did the uh, parasol for uh for Skylab uh David the bubble boy you may have heard of him yes, he uh -huh. lived in Houston right and he had a, a uh, you know, problem with the, his immune system. The movie about the boy in the yeah, bubble and all the, that. John Travolta yeah. starred as him in the yes. movie, and so. Uh, What's the connection there? Well, so so NASA, since he was in Houston, uh, decided to. Uh, I'm not sure how that that worked, but they NASA built two spacesuits for him that he could get in and actually leave his bubble for the first time. And Mom sewed both of those spacesuits. Huh. Yeah, one of them's in the uh, Smithsonian now. I understand. Well, that's very interesting. So, well, is there something else you'd like us to know about this chapter of space history <laughs> that your family and mom, Eileen, uh, Elaine Bakers? Hi, Mr. Schweiker, planetary <laughs> defender. You may come in here if you want. We're doing a, uh, you might come in here a minute? You haven't been hit by an asteroid, have you? No, I know, but you're going to protect us from yeah, that. My name is Mark, uh, our tech. We're glad that you're here. Friend of Charlie Mars, of course, and all that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I love about it. Should I sit down a minute? And have no, 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 I'm just, we're, we're okay, about good. to do our thing, so I'm just yeah, walking around taking a look. Great, great. Well, good to see you. Yes, sir. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Anyway, great. We had had to get up and talk to Mr. Schweikert there. Marty, I don't know if you swung around there <laughs> to get any of that. But uh, you heard Mr. Schweikert here try to get him to sit down here, but uh, kick you out of there, Herb. Yeah, right. But uh, anyway, we'll have some video of that. Come in here a minute, uh, Mr. Dwight. Are we going live? Uh, yeah, you, I want yeah. you to just come over here and, and uh, uh, here, sit oh. down there a minute there. Oh, well, uh, I want to get off there. Uh, as we're assembling for this thing, we're talking to Herb Baker in... Uh, uh, here we have uh, Bonajetsky, Mr. Uh, Stephen Bonajetsky here, uh, the director. Getting worse uh, every time. Yeah. Uh, am I getting better at your name? No. Oh. Uh, say your name, last name, Steve. Stephen Bonajetsky. 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 Okay. Uh, turn the Yeti like the Yeti Mike in there. As I'm off camera, we're talking about Herb about his mom being a hidden figure. Of did, this. did Herb tell you the story how we actually got acquainted? Or we heard us hear it. Yeah. Uh, I had started collecting the footage I was going to use for the film, and uh, I got uh, the sequence of, of when the seamstresses were putting together the parasol. And I saw on, on Space Hipsters, the group that Herb was a member of, run by Emily Carney. Hi, Emily. Sorry you can't make it today. She's, got, uh, she's not feeling well. And uh, unfortunately, she texted me last night, so sorry we can't see you there. We've... We've got everything set up for you. Um, and I said to her, look, uh, I've got some footage here. Is your mother in this by chance? And he, he only knew that there was a, a single photograph. And yeah. then I sent him about 20 minutes worth of yeah. footage. And yeah. I just said, oh, we're going to have a look through and tell me what you see. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. And of course, I, I didn't know that yeah. video of what they were doing that, that day of working on the parasol existed. And so, so I opened up the video and looked at it and I thought, Oh my God, that's my mother. I, you know, and of course by that time she had passed on, and and uh, so seeing that that video of her working on the parasol, years after you know we we lost her, and yeah, like you know, fifteen or twenty minutes of it, and so uh, I still go back and watch that every oh, once cool. in a while. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was amazing. That, that's where that's when uh, Herb figured out that I wasn't a crackpot. <laughs> right. That's for sure. Uh, which, which is pretty much what, what happened, you know, like, I came out of nowhere as far as all you guys were concerned. And then suddenly yeah. I'm like, look at what I came. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that worked really well. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't throw that thing in our backyard and make it crash in, in uh, miss me by that much. That, look, I've got the scar to prove. <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember when, when I was a kid, it was a big deal. I was 10 years old and the news... Uh, 
in the days before it crashing, they were saying, we're in the footprint where there is a yeah. possibility. And I remember thinking, uh, I hope it doesn't hit my house. Yeah. Um, and there was the, uh, the, the, the Miss Universe that happened, I think, a week later or 10 days mm. later. And that was the first time that they showed the, uh, the, the relics from, from oh, yeah. Skylab. Okay, right. And like I was saying yesterday on the show, you know, in Esperance, it's the one town where wearing a T-shirt like this, people go, oh, I remember when that crashed yeah. down. Yes, yeah. I was over there and I remember the thing and the sonic yeah. booms. And, yeah. yeah, that's a big deal to them, I think. Yeah, yeah. And they've got this uh, plaque thing there with uh, all the significant historical events that happened in Esperance. Hmm. And they have this one that just said Skylab 1979. And, and they said, I thought the world was ending. Oh, so yeah, if they, if they didn't know that, yeah. or they, even if they knew, they weren't expecting it to, to land in their backyard. Yeah, they were told yeah. the day at midnight, they were told based on reports from NORAD mm -hmm. that it had crashed in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. So everyone went to bed thinking everything's okay. And then the, the multiple sonic booms that were just suddenly mm -hmm. appearing over, over Esperance, people were like, it's World War Three. Mm -hmm. They thought yeah. World War Three had started because they were hearing all the... Uh, yeah. The, the 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 material falling yeah. falling on onto the uh, onto yeah. the roof. I'm just seeing a very yeah. important person here, so I might yeah. locate myself. <laughs> yeah, just got a question for you. Yeah, yeah. do you know do anything about, about the letter, letter that, that came, came or the, the uh, citation, citation? I should, should say. say. Uh, oh yes, I know. <laughs> oh, may want to comment on that. Uh, that was a a tongue in cheek. I mean, uh, the Australian sense of humour. Um, uh, uh, oh yeah, for the for littering. Yes. Yeah. They were they were issued a citation for four hundred Australian dollars for yes. littering. Yes. And there is a photograph in the National Geographic magazine from uh -huh. 1979. You can see the uh, the, yeah. the citation being given. Yeah. For forty. You know for 40 no 30 30 30 years it remained unpaid because it was a joke it was it was yeah. never a, a yeah. real fine yeah and a radio station in in california or two of them got hot wind of this and thought we're going to start a, a, a campaign a campaign to, yeah. to, to fund from our listeners yeah. to fund the uh, the payment, uh paying yeah. the fine and in, in i think it was 2009 they flew a representative out from the radio station and handed the check yes. to uh, to the Esperance Museum. But now yeah. I've held that check. It's a huge check, <laughs> right? And I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and then it's on the side of the uh, of the Esperance Museum. It's got this huge placard that says, "In 1979, NASA crashed a spacecraft in our backyard. We find them for littering, paid in full with a, like a red <laughs> stamp." So uh, I'll, I'll share that photograph with you. Um, I, I took a, a photo. Of it, I don't know if I have it on me. I'll, I'll have to email it to yeah, you. Later. I'd like to to see that too. Yeah. Yeah. Really beautiful museum, and and uh, there is a certain crew that is featured proficiently in uh, <laughs> or prominently in, uh, in in one section of it, and that includes the gentleman sitting. Herb, would you come up here yeah. and? Uh, uh, yeah. let's, Jack, would you mind standing here? Herb, for like a little recording yeah. little thing here for us today. Would you sit there where Herb was? Oh, okay. right there. You have to deal with me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'll ask you the uh, question if no one there. else dares to uh, ask. Careful, I'm going to see here. Yeah, so we'll move that out of the way there. Hit you right there. Yeah. My legs are going to sleep. <laughs> well, we won't, we won't keep you long. We're bringing Mr. Lausma into the studio here. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in there real quick yeah, sure. uh, just to uh, got got the producer here. We got Mr. Jack Lausma, legend here, uh, great friend of the museum and our friend Charlie Mars. 50th anniversary of Skylab. This documentary really says a lot about it, doesn't it, Jack? It's a great one. I think it's really the only one that's out there. And uh, we have used it several times with their permission, of course. <laughs> it's good well, to be involved. Than that, it's uh, I remember when when uh, we were at Space Fest and we asked if we could interview you and you didn't know who we were. You know, we're just like these little upstarts going, uh, kind of allows me. Can we interview you? You know, who's this? And I remember Gracia and Mary said, to you, "Come on, you have to talk to this fellow." <laughs> and then we we didn't stay in contact with you until the film was finished. And then we flew you out to Huntsville for the yeah, world and premiere. Mary was there too. Yeah. yeah. And that was uh, that was when you saw the film for the first time. And yeah. I can tell you, as a, as a director, when you make a film about a mission that you didn't fly on, but the people who flew on it are watching the film, there is nothing more stressful than that. You're just sitting there going, <laughs> "Please do not." Like, Jack, did we, did we make you uncomfortable? <laughs> no, no. Actually, I, I was so buzzed, I was so pumped on adrenaline. I, I, I can't. Well, he's got to go do some autographs. But I want to ask you, sir, in 50 years. 
a hundred years from Skylab when you were up there, what should people think about that? What, what, what will be important 50 years ago to remember about Skylab and your accomplishments with those eight other astronauts? There are several things, but one of them that's quite clear. Up until that time, we'd be living in a one-man capsule, a two-man capsule, and a three-man capsule, elbow to elbow and neck to neck and doing everything private or personal together. And we were wanting to have a space station. What did we know about making a space station? So this is why we had the Skylab. It was the world's our first space station. We learned how to make the one that's up there now. But while we were doing it, we had these uh, three important um, um, things to do that also contributed greatly. Our studies of the sun, our studies medically in space, and the materials process and kind of things. We had, must have had about 60 experiments, but those were the three major ones. We learned a lot of things that we didn't know, and we also learned how to make the International Space Station. There you go. Uh, the, apparently, I've heard as well, you also learned how to eat uh, uh, butterscotch cookies or something like that. I ate all the butterscotch cookies I could find. <laughs> that was a... I traded them for other things. <laughs> Did you? All right. Traded them for a bath. Okay, up there. Uh, well, that's that is, you know, this Skylab, you laid the bedrock for things that are going on right now in your national and solar physics, too, uh, with true. all the great work that's up true. there. Yeah, up above the atmosphere, you get 100% of the information that comes uh -huh. from the sun, whereas down here, a lot of it's absorbed in the atmosphere. Uh -huh. and so I miss a lot of information. Well, you're 56 days up there, 58, I guess, right? We all, Space Geeks, thinks the coolest thing you did was fly that MMU unit inside there. We had a couple of them, and the one that we did fly, we made some uh, corrections to it and some suggestions. And basically, that's like the one that we were able to take outside then mm -hmm. on the uh, space station or, or for uh, the early shuttle flights. Well, we got the director of Searching for Skylab, uh, Mr. Dwight here and uh, Colonel Jack Lausma, God bless you and all you stand for, sir. We're so glad you're here and support our museum in so many ways. And it's we always a you privilege. Could... I go back to when we were in a shopping center. Yes, you do. Yes, you <laughs> oh, do. Wow. Charlie yeah. Mars and Bob Seek and That's all them right. people trying to raise money for our beautiful monuments over there. That's right. Well, you go enjoy some love from your space fans out there, sir. And we look forward to seeing you. Going to be out at Kennedy Space Center this year again? Oh, I come often, yes. Okay, well, we look forward to seeing you We have you the up Astronaut there. Encounter Program. Absolutely. Sometimes they're looking for somebody old enough to uh, be uh, an ancient. No, we, yeah, well, <laughs> well, they line up for you, and our astronaut wrangler, Nick Thomas, is also a friend of our museum. So we'll be looking forward to you out there, okay, sir? Well, I always look All forward right. to coming here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh-huh. And with that, I'll have Marty say... Uh, uh, we'll join you again maybe later here. Thank you. What, uh, one, one final comment as Jack's going off here. Got a good turnout so far. Uh, we've had a good trip to America, you know, so. Yeah. We've been, uh, you, you guys have looked after us so well. It's, it's been fantastic. At no point have we been wanting for anything. It's just like, well. <laughs> okay. I looked, I looked at the stuff I was, you gave me. Well, we'll try to find a boodle of gin or something for you here afterwards or afterwards when you can sit back and enjoy. But thank you for bringing the notoriety and attention to the American Space Museum, Dwight. Uh, it's you, a pleasure. Uh, uh, you and your wife are also delightful. And we look forward to a great future with you all. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. And it's been a pleasure coming on the show again. All yeah. right. Well, with that, I'm going to say we can't wait to see you to bridge the space between us here at the museum. And we will be reporting more about this beautiful day uh, here at the American Space Museum, a book signing with uh, two legendary astronauts, Rusty Schweikert and uh, Jack Lausman, who we just talked to. We may get effort Rusty later. Who knows? But thank you very much, Marty. And we will see you again, like I said, to Dwight, you say my tagline. Bridge the space between, between us. us. There you Bridge, go, baby. Sorry, let me let me do that again. And if all I right. can have some echo on yes, the Yes, okay. Um, yes, all right. We Bridge. hope to see you again at the American Space Museum too. Bridge, Bridge the space, space between, between us. us. <laughs> all right.